in Grimmy et Arth Kerzer. Daithen Aden in Karn eb Marvut. Emir var Emreis. Bow. Your Imperial Majesty. Arer ep do orde. Avelian namen vat gern favort. So many months at Faltest Court, yet you still haven't mastered the basics of etiquette. Thanks for your help. Think nothing of it. May the great sun light your path. Welcome to another Witcher lore video, guys. So it's been quite a while since I last covered a religion in the Witcher universe, so I thought for today's video it'd be quite cool to go back to this series and cover another religion. So I've had this religion suggested to me before, and I've wanted to cover it for quite a while, because I really like Nilfgaard and I love that area in the Witcher universe, so I've decided to make today's video on the Great Sun. So let's begin with some very basic information about this religion. The Great Sun is the mainly worshipped religion in the Nilfgaardian Empire. And this is obviously quite clear to all of you that have played the games or read the books, and it did fall out of popularity for quite some time, but I'll go into that later in the video. But at the minute, it is kind of the figurehead of the Nilfgaardian Empire. The sun symbol is almost the symbol of the Nilfgaardian Empire at this point. So actually, to go into the symbol a little bit more, the symbol is a large sun, and it dawns all Nilfgaardian banners, and sometimes even armour, and this shows that the cult of the Great Sun has a massive influence over the Nilfgaardian army, and obviously not just the Nilfgaardian army, but the Nilfgaardian Empire as a whole. The head of this religion is said to be a high priest, which may in fact actually also be the Emperor of Nilfgaard, they might be one and the same. Like, whenever you become the Emperor of Nilfgaard, you become the head of this religion. So that's some very basic information. Now for this next part of the video, what I will say is that we don't really have all that much information on this religion from the books or the games, and most of the information I'm going to be presenting you with is actually from the official tabletop Witcher board game, and this board game does expound on this religion and the way it works massively. So for now, this information I'm going to present you with is the only information that has actually been given to us, and therefore arguably the most lore friendly. And it all does make complete sense within the Witch universe, and it all fits into the lore quite well. And it's from the official tabletop game, of course. So it obviously has a little bit more to stand on than, say, just a fanfiction. So this religion was one of many religions in the Nilfgaardian Empire, but was most popular in the core regions of Nilfgaard, such as Nilfgaard itself. And I believe the actual centre for this religion is the City of Golden Towers, which is the capital of Nilfgaard. Or as you may know it, Nilfgaard, as that is the actual name of the city. And it is also technically the capital of Nilfgaard the province as well. In its earlier years, it was one of many other religions, and not as widely worshipped as it is in the Witch universe today. And it began to gain popularity when the predecessor of Emperor Fergus Var Emrys, who is the father of Amir Var Emrys, began to reform the Nilfgaardian Empire. Because you see, this ruler was looking for a way to unite all the people in their empire, and also looking for a symbol to keep the empire united, should the current dynasty fail. Because as you can see with a lot of these monarchies, dynasties hold a great deal of value, and he didn't necessarily want a less than that, but if the dynasty fails, he wants the people to have something to fall back on, so the empire, and therefore his legacy, won't just crumble. So this ruler decided that he would give the priests of the Great Sun support, money, and also so he would begin to slowly allow this cult to gain new followers throughout all of the Nilfgaardian Empire. So he basically decided that the Great Sun would be this thing they'd fall back on, and that this would be the almost, I suppose you could say, the figurehead of the Nilfgaardian Empire, with the true power behind this religion being the Emperor themselves. So in return for the newfound power the Emperor gave to the cult of the Grey Sun, it was demanded that this religion would give the Emperor absolute support. Say if he were to ever make new policies, he would expect the cult of the Great Sun to support his policies publicly, and therefore the public would support them more because their religion does. Eventually, the Emperor decreed that this cult would become the official state religion. Obviously, the people were okay with this, because at this point, most of them followed the religion anyway. And this decree was known as the March 8th Edict. All was going well with this plan for quite some time, the role of Emperor passed to Fergus Var Emrys, and the religion under his rule maintained its high status, but then Fergus was dethroned by the Usurper. 
and then the usurper became emperor himself, and whilst under his rule, this religion lost a lot of its rights. However, sometime later, the usurper himself was overthrown by Emir Var Emrys, and then Emir restored this religion to the powerful position it had under his father. And that's effectively the full history of this religion and where The Witcher 3 kicks off. Nothing really changes with the religion in The Witcher 3, no matter which route you really go, nothing really seems to affect it as a whole. But anyway, I'm going to move on to this religion's possible origins and some general information about it. Bear in mind all this information is from the tabletop board game. So, the origin of this religion is actually said to be from the elven cult of nature, which is quite interesting because as we know, pretty much all the major human cities were built on elven ruins, and yet again we can see that they've taken something from the elven culture again. So it does have more of a root to it than say just a random religion made up a bit later on. This religion has many holidays, but the most important are the equinoxes, and this is when night and day are the same length on the elven calendar, and one of their other most important holidays is the birthday of the current emperor. These holidays are celebrated throughout the Nilfgaardian Empire, and they're actually considered quite esteemed celebrations. And this is due to the fact that generally major officials, aristocrats, and commanders attend these celebrations, and a lot of the music in these celebrations is quite solemn, it's not quite upbeat and mad and dancing, it's more esteemed. And actually, a lot of the customs related with this holiday are stolen directly from elven traditions, and this may be to do with this religion's roots in the elven culture. Ceremonies are also performed on these days, and they are performed by the emperor in the capital, and at this time, the emperor acts as a high priest of the religion. Finally, priests of this cult wear white clothing, and it's generally embroidered with silver and gold, and they only wear this clothing during the celebrations, and when they're not taking part in the festivities, they simply wear black. And actually, some more lore was added to this religion in the second edition of this tabletop board game, and this lore reveals that like many other religions, becoming a priest is considered to be a career path. So how you would become a priest is after finishing theological college and passing exams, you gain the official title of priest. And depending on the level of education received, a fledder priest can actually directly join one of the minor temples. And another interesting fact is that no priest is allowed to have magical abilities. And if a priest is found to have magical abilities, they are instead sent to the Imperial Magical Academy in Loch Grimm. And this is obviously because anyone with really good magical abilities, they'll want to probably have them in the army because it's a very useful weapon to have on your side. And the Great Sun is also the patron for warmth, life, humanity, emperor, ruling dynasty, and the army, and it actually may potentially have a military arm known as Ard Feyn. So the Cult of the Great Sun symbol is thought to be directly taken from the Elven Solar Calendar. And you can see a picture here, and you can see the coat of arms as well, and you can see that it has been almost directly ripped from that. And that also shows its Elven roots. But anyway guys, that's the end of today's video. I hope you've all enjoyed. This has been quite a fun video to make. This religion's really, really cool. It's quite an interesting religion because obviously it's in a way quite a big part of the games because any interaction you have with a Nilf Guardian, they generally have the Great Sun as a symbol on their armor. So I'd say that the Great Sun has a massive influence on the games. But yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video guys. As always, these videos take me a while to make, so if you could click the like button that would be really helpful, it helps out the channel and it's really just a nice thing to do. So thank you to everybody that clicks the like button, it's very very kind of you. If this is the first video you're finding on my channel, I do high fantasy lore videos every so often, it's mainly The Witcher, but I do do other lore videos if I have time, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see more of those. And also, of course, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I do updates on there whenever I can. I post stuff on there when I feel like I need to. Every time a new video comes out, I post it on there. So if you're more active on Twitter than YouTube and you don't want to miss a video, I'd recommend following me on there as you'll get my tweet whenever the video comes out. And also, of course, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I'm going to do some more games on there soon. I want to do some more fantasy games on there. I'd like to play stuff like God of War and all that on there when I get a PS4. So that might be quite fun to do. So if you want to follow me on Twitch and get the notification for when I do do stuff like that, be sure to go and follow me on there. And finally, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges. You guys are just amazing. It's very, very kind what you do. I just want to say thank you to every single one of these names. You're all just great. You help me out with the videos, and it's just such a kind thing to do. I'm honestly just glad to put every single one of these names at the end of my videos, as I honestly feel like I kind of owe you, because it's just such a kind thing that you do. So thank you to every single one of these people. Anyway, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week.